In this video, I show you how I built an awesome Shishugiban entryway and how in the end, it ultimately became a lesson in the dangers of overconfidence. Um, and now what we're gonna do to create a look that's even cooler is we're lightly sanding it with a 60 grit orbital. Um, you're not gonna be able to really see it here, but this little section I uh, painted with linseed oil and it's not gonna even really look good yet. It'll, after it dries, it'll create a nice sheen. So you have this patina, I don't know if patina is the right word, but um, rustic look. I'm just gonna do a little section over here to just show you the sanding level. So this is not sanded, and then this is sanded, so it's a pretty light thing. And then I'm just leaving, leaving a little bit of the charring on there, and just so the grain pops out in between the chars. So this is the linseed oil treatment, um, and it'll it shines up real good, but then the color sort of deepens and richens after the linseed oil dries out. So it's got a nice, you know, this is a red wood, which is already a really rot resistant wood. And you add the shishugi bond treatment with some linseed oil, uh, makes it look really cool, bitchin' old and rustic, and should last quite a long time. And we'll do all of these and we'll create a great entryway, which will show you next. So these are the posts for our new entryway. And the only thing I really want to draw your attention to is the um, two by four that goes across between them. And that's screwed on and that ensures that they're on the right plane with each other when we stick the um, final header across the top. And these are nice and plumb. It's gonna be beautiful. We need those clamps. Okay, Pat. Are you ready? Okay. So, Pat, before yeah. you do that, yeah. you're not holding anything that's held on right. So, you need to have a hand on the 2x4. Like yeah, that. there you go. Now you're holding something that's secure. Okay. There you go. Good. So at this stage in the game, I guess the important things to show you are, uh, well first I measured from the top down the width that I wanted the post to set on the bottom, uh, and then I put on the 2x4 scabs, and those are really critical so that when you stick up the big board, it sets on top. Um, and then once I put the 2x4 scabs on this side, then I put a laser level on top of them and shot the level over there, uh, and then made the same uh, marks for that side. So now we have a perfectly plumb and level archway, or not archway, but uh, entry gate. Okay, I'm gonna go back down. Okay. So when we started to put up this second cross member, it was a lot heavier than the other one, filled with more water, and so it was not, it didn't feel safe. So, since this was too hard to carry up ourselves, we're using two ratchet straps. Whoops! And then uh, just pulling it up one by one. When the other one, when one's tight, we pull up the other one. So, the one point I wanted to make in terms of safety, because this is all pretty intense work. So Pat here, when he's, he's stabilizing this right now, and this is not secured over here. 
But what he's doing is this board right here is nice and secure and stable. So he's keeping one hand fully locked on the secure point at all times. So then when he holds this, he's got something secure to, to hold on to. So now we got this just locked in place. It's not going anywhere. And then we're gonna go lift that one up and then we'll screw it off and we'll be ready to go. So earlier we were trying to lift this with just the two ladders. Um, and I just wanted to say one thing about the trigger point that made me want to stop. And I think we all have sort of a little internal voice, which we know what's safe and what's not safe. And it's just hard to, when you realize it's going to take a lot longer and you got to do a lot more steps and put a lot more safety things in place to actually stop. And then to go like, okay, this actually feels dangerous. And then to just back off, rethink the whole thing and start over. And once we came up with the ratcheting strap idea, then it felt safe to all of us. So, so don't, so just, if it feels unsafe, it probably is. Stop, rethink it, make it safe and start over. Two, three, shimmy. We got to release a little bit. Okay. One, two, three, shimmy. Pretty good. You're good? Are you, lined up. are you right on then? Yeah, that looks that looks perfect to me. Okay. Most people when they try to drill holes, a long hole like this through something like this, they try to eyeball it and it, it doesn't ever really work, especially if you're have struggling to get right in front of it to see it. Even then you can't really see it. So uh, using a square and a level is really the way to go. So this is a nice little handy one with the magnets on it. Really helpful in this situation. So I'm gonna put it right on my point right here. And then I'm gonna put it to level. And I'm gonna take this guy over here and I'm gonna get him square. So I'm gonna do level and square. And then I'm just going to do a little bit and we'll try to get it. And then I'm going to check it again. So I got a little bit down, so I got to go up a little bit. Yeah, so I got to go a little bit that way and a little bit down. So that's what I'm going to do now. Slow this out, it's on speed two, it needs to be on speed one. Okay. Let's go see how we did. So you can see the it's about three inches up, which is right where I wanted it to be. And it's fairly centered on the post, which was my goal. It's actually uh, just a hair off to the left there, but um, had we not used that whole technique, it would have been a lot worse. So I'm just gonna set these things with the regular old impact driver with an adapter, a little speed chuck adapter. You should get one of those for your kid if you don't have one. Um, they're just super useful um, and then it's just a, a I think a regular small size adapted up to these big ones it works fine uh, a bigger one would be great if I had a more powerful driver but I don't have it with me so we're just gonna use the little one and max it out so that's about max and then if you try to take this off right now it's not gonna come off um, so a quick little trick is just hit reverse, grab it, knock it a couple of times with a hammer, and then it'll pop right out. So this is kind of a pain. If I had a bigger driver, then we would just use a bigger driver to go all the way in. But you get the idea. We'll just finish it off like this, and that's it. And then we'll be done. So it's two years later now. And the thing that you didn't see, which we didn't capture on camera, was I rented this machine behind us. And I had the trailer right in front of the entryway. And I was loading this 
tractor onto the trailer and I neglected to put the boom down and it cracked out and destroyed that entire entryway. So the only place it exists right now is in digital form on the internet. It was incredibly painful. So why I say it's a Zen build is because I had to completely let it go. It was like a mandala, create it and let it go. And the, there is one lesson which I'd like to share. And that is that I was super mindful during the difficult parts of that build, during lifting and putting up all of the woods as you saw in the video. But afterwards, I started getting overconfident and so I destroyed the whole thing. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was destroyed. Uh, it, emotionally, it was very, very difficult. But I'm glad I get to share it now because the lesson learned was super valuable. I think it, overconfidence is really underappreciated as potentially really destructive factor in your life. You don't want to be underconfident either. You know, you need energy and motivation, but once you start feeling good about it, once you start really feeling strong about it, that's when you got to pay more attention and slow down. So I hope that's helpful and um, we'll see you in the next video.